Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. In this one I'm not going to be cooking at all, I'm going to be talking about knives and sharpening and, and things like that. Hello there, uh, I thought I'd do a video about how I look after my knives. I've had a couple of requests recently about where I choose them from, different selections of knives I've got here as you can see. Um, not a huge array but a decent amount. Anyway, I'm going to run you through how I look after them and keep them sharp. Okay, what I want to do is give you some practical advice. So we're not going to go for what the best knives in the world are. We're going to go for what I think is the most uh, reasonable selection to have, at least starting off with, and decent quality, but not the world, not the most expensive in the world. Uh, four knives there, plus a chantry sharpener and a diamond dusted steel. So chantry sharpener around about thirty pounds, and a diamond steel about twenty. So already we're sort of a bit cheaper than a good whetstone. Victorian Ox, good good make. They're Swiss, I would say, of the really good quality ones, they're probably the best value. That is a Cook's Knife, it's made by Robert Walsh. Robert Walsh, uh, I won it in a competition. That is a tomato knife, so it's a mini serrated knife. And that is a paring knife, or a utility knife. And I would say, concentrate on having four reasonable ones, that, that sort of quality and those four knives and you'll be more than happy to start off with. That is a Cook's knife, it's just a bigger one. Again, it's a Victorian Ox. I love that. I love that knife. Um, this is a filleting knife made by a French company called Sabatier. I think they're higher grade of steel. They take a bit of work to get sharp, but they are really good. Um, that is the closest thing I would have to a Japanese style knife. Robert Walsh again, from my competition. And that is a butcher's knife, that is really old really old you hold it differently uh, yeah so those four knives are great to start off with that is a bread knife uh, for cutting bread in case there was any doubt there right let's show you these two cooks knives so they both do the same job they've got the same sort of design it's got curved rounded blade that motion there that sort of rocking sliding it backwards and forwards is safer. It's a good safe way to start cutting because you're less likely to chop your finger off. So that is a very standard size, I believe, an eight inch knife, cook's knife. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my foot long. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. I thought I'd get there before somebody else did. Okay, how you hold a butcher's knife? It's like that. You've got control then, wiggling in between those bones and those joints. And also I found out from my lady here, in between the uh, patio stones where she likes to take the weeds out. Yeah, not good. All right then, when I'm doing accurate cutting, I quite often put my pointy finger along the blade. I find that it makes it more accurate. It's like you're cutting with your finger, if that makes any sense. I like to sharpen my nose when they're slightly damp. So I've got a damp cloth there. From the heel to the tip, drag it through four to six times, don't do any more than that, you'll end up probably making them more blunt eventually. Now, this isn't a technique I use, but if you're worried about this, a damp cloth or tea towel or something underneath there to stop it sliding around, put the knife up against it, make a, a very oblique angle, I've just flipped it round to do the other side. That knife is hard to do it like this, especially because it's such a big knife, but you might want to try that technique. This technique is how I do mine. Notice my thumb position there is tucked in so there's no chance of me cutting through the tendons but if you notice my right hand the wrist is swiveling so the knife the blade is not getting anywhere near my thumb my hand it really isn't but it's a slightly strange technique but you might want to practice this with a smaller knife anyway so i will show you with the butcher's one and it's either side of the steel and so you just have to get used to it. it. Once you do get used to doing this, you know, it looks flash. You see Gordon Ramsay doing it. And but there's a reason why chefs do it. It's not to look flash. It's because it's the most practical way and quickest way of doing it. So while I race through the rest of these, um, so the whetstone, I'm going to get one and I'm going to get good at it because the only other time I tried before, it, I didn't know what I was doing and I, and I couldn't get my knives sharp with it. So I thought they were rubbish. But I, I am aware that they are, you will get, a knife much sharper with a whetstone than you will with these. But whetstone's a good one, can be up to sort of like 70 or 80 quid. That's a lot of money. Um, so this sort of more like practical advice, you know, a few basic knives that are good and a good way to maintain them so that you'll be happy that your knives are sharp and you'll be able to do really little thin slices of cherry tomatoes like that. With no weight from my hand, 
from my body, my arm coming down into it. It's just the weight of the knife and just a nice clean slice. And for some reason I thought, oh, let's present them on the knife. That looks cool. I don't know why I do things. I just do stuff sometimes. There's another angle, cutting cherry tomatoes. Again, I'm not putting any pressure on there. My fingers are tucked in out of the way. You learn the hard way when you've nipped off the end of your finger. And grapes are really hard to cut if you've got a blunt knife. Not with that nice sharp knife. So there you go. The knives are sharp. Now, the, another technique for using a steel is a wet knife on this. So I find this, is, I suppose, might be more like using a whetstone than any other technique. A sort of circular motion like that. I find that saboteur sometimes quite hard to get sharp, so I, I quite often will do it that way. But once it's sharp, my God, is it sharp. So I thought I'd demonstrate to you a very, very old, cheesy buffet sort of presentation like with a fanned lemon. It's really naff and cheesy, but, you know, if you're doing some prawn volivons on a buffet, people will expect something like this. So you've cut through to fan them, and now, obviously, what you do is you unfortunately with your fingers you block the view <laughs> sorry about that I basically went to the middle cut down through like to the radius so that I've got these little bits like that that I can just tuck under there and create a nice little sort of lemony fan wouldn't that look nice anyway that's it the video's over that's my sort of hopefully that's useful I had a couple of people request I do something with knives so my advice is don't spend this, the world on really super expensive Japanese knives unless you're loaded then go for it but a Victorian Ox I think are really good um, just a few knives get yourself started and sharpen them with a Chantry and a Diamond Steel and I think you'll be satisfied anyway thank you very much for watching see you in the next video come real soon bye